April 11th, St. Leo the Great. Leo was born at Rome. He embraced the sacred ministry, was made archdeacon of the Roman Church by St. Celestine, and under him and Sixtus III had a large share in governing of the church. On the death of Sixtus, Leo was chosen pope and consecrated on St. Michael's Day in the year 440 amid great joy. St. Leo the Great reigned as Pope from the year 440 to the 461. He was one of the greatest popes of history. He fought against numerous heresies that agitated the church, principally against the Manichaeans and Pelagians. In the year 452, he faced Attila and convinced the scourge of God and his Huns not to attack Rome and to leave Italy. It is in the story of Attila where St. Leo confirmed his sanctity. When Attila and his Huns broke into Italy and marched through its burning cities onto Rome, Leo went out boldly to meet him. He prevailed upon him to turn back. Astonished to see the terrible Attila, the scourge of God, fresh from the sack of Milan and Pavia, with the rich prize of Rome within his grasp, turn his great host back to the Danube at the saint's word, his chiefs asked him why he had acted so strangely. He answered that he saw two venerable personages, supposed to be Saints Peter and Paul, standing behind Leo, and impressed by this vision, he withdrew. On facing of heresies, there was the case of many Africans who had been driven away by the Vandals and had settled in Rome and established a secret Manchaean community there. When St. Leo discovered them, he denounced them to the priests and religious and warned the people to be on their guard against this reprehensible heresy. In Spain, the heresy of Princilianism still survived and was attracting new adherents, provoking countless riots and general agitation. St. Leo was informed of this situation by St. Turbius, Bishop of Astorgia in Spain. The Pope wrote him a long letter in which he refuted the errors of Priscillian's heresy and qualified it as the sewer of all prior heresies. In particular, he condemned its denial of free will and the influence of astrology. St. Leo also showed the connection between the Priscillians and the Manchaeans and he sent St. Turbius the conclusions of the judicial process that he had made against the later in Rome. The story of St. Leo is very beautiful because you can see how he acted with the authority of a pope and at the same time as a saint, that is, a person whom the Catholic Church declared infallible to be one whom heroically practiced all the virtues. Leo loved to ascribe all the fruits of his unsparing labors to the glorious chief of the apostles, who, he often declared, lives and governs in his successors.